Imagine having an easy way to pay your bus fares and everything else, but just a tap in a matatu and nobody's asking you for your money. Now, matters financial inclusion are quite at the heart of the success of this economy and even Kenyans in general. And I'm here to speak to someone who probably you have the logo in their card, and that's the Visa East Africa GM, Ivan Gigi, and she's here to help us understand what are they doing to ensure that the ecosystem is working well for Kenyans to make their lives even better when it comes to matters financial inclusion. At their beautiful offices, the conversation is happening on the Trading Bell Show. Welcome. Eva, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great, and uh, you have a beautiful place, first of all, I must acknowledge. <laughs> I, I think we were torn on where we have this interview for the aesthetics, so congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like it. It's, it's been very de deliberate because we want um, to represent the diversity of Africa. Mm -hmm. At the same time, um, bringing the elements of creativity that's required in innovation. Yeah. Yeah. Great. So Kenya is prided with uh, being a frontier when it comes to matters, fintech especially when, when you look at the field of mobile money and all that. And, um, you know, a lot of case studies have been done even by the renowned institutions on how Kenya is really at the forefront of this. And you have not been left behind and you're also really an enabler of this particular ecosystem. And I just wanted to pick uh, your mind on this area. What is your role and mandate, especially in ensuring we are in this and the fact that we are here in Kenya? So as a start, um, the history of Visa in, in, in Kenya specifically spans uh, 15 years. Visa's globally, I mean, Visa's been around globally for the last um, slightly over 60 years. Yeah. Um, so why Kenya? Um, besides Kenya being the East Africa hub mm -hmm. overlooking um, 11 countries, yeah. Kenya, as you rightly put it, is you know, ranking quite high as far as innovation goes. Okay. So when Visa set up here, it was one to take advantage of a vibrant um, and very stable financial system. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, serve um, a, a society that's um, constantly looking for an efficient way mm -hmm. to drive trade. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we are an industrious, well, we are very industrious uh, culture. Uh, and so, you know, um, trade is very key to, to how we do business. So mm -hmm. Visa being a global payments technology company, I mean, was, it, it was a no-brainer to set up here. Mm -hmm. So when I look at um, financial inclusion and, and, and what it takes, um, as a start, payments are the heart of it. We, we, we say, you know, payments are the on-ramp to financial inclusion. Absolutely. Because the moment you start um, you know, receiving payments, whether it's a remittance or paying a merchant mm -hmm. or you know, a company making a payment to import um, inventory, um, you know, orientation into financial services starts. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the approach that we take. Um, mm -hmm. Working with partners who you know, uh, have you know, a similar uh, objective. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and secondly, um, bringing in technology that is that serves yeah mm -hmm. so technology that is secure technology yeah. that is seamless mm -hmm. and technology that's convenient yeah so those are the various aspects that um, you know we bring together to to make sure that you know um, the objective or the dream of financial inclusion is achieved excellent and i like that you bring in the aspect of kenya and i'm curious to ask you what you see in the future this and i love the word that you used innovation that constantly we're innovating what do you see as a leader and seated at uh, that seat where you can see and predict the future? What is in your crystal ball? Good question. Um, as a start, I think, let, let, me, let me just build some background to that. What we saw during COVID accelerated financial, financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. It also, um, and, and that was mainly driven by, you know, a faster adoption to digital payments. Um, so when you think of things like, um, you know, e-commerce traditionally being a preserve for a particular group of people, yeah. the fact that we couldn't move e-commerce mm -hmm. was very real to our households. Secondly, um, digital payments were an intervention to avoid faster spread of the virus. Okay. 
So we are operating off, off that foundation. So we saw more people get into digital payments mm -hmm. because either, you know, they're buying goods and services online. Yeah. Two, they are very careful not to handle cash because that would be seen as a vector to transmit the virus. Yeah. So it's become an ingrained habit. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for the future? Mm -hmm. One, consumers have evolved and evolved really fast. Yeah. So consumers now want convenience. Con consumers want security. Mm -hmm. Consumers want ubiquity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Consumers want um, global. Um, then when you look at merchants, what do merchants want? Merchants want efficient cash, cash flows, yeah. right? Merchants want um, a one stop for all the services they require, whether they are making, you know, payroll payments, whether they're, you know, tracking inventory, whether they are ordering for, for, for their goods, whether they are connecting with their, with their customers. What do governments want? Governments want, you know, an efficient way to deliver services to citizens. Mm -hmm. That's what is going to form the future of, of, of digital payments in, in our country. Okay. So uh, where do we come in as Visa? Uh, one is, is, is the foundation on which we're built. Yeah? We say our purpose is to uplift everyone everywhere by being the best way to pay and be paid. Yeah. So inclusivity is a key part of that. Yeah? And that's why we, we draw partnerships from all over governments, merchants, consumers, financial institutions, mm -hmm. fintechs. Mm -hmm. That's why we've got this space. Yeah. Because the future of digital payments will be built here. Okay. And it will be a collaborative you know, agenda. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is security. Security is at the heart of what we do. Absolutely. Over the last uh, few years, we've spent um, over $10 billion globally to ensure that we continue to provide a secure payment system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you think of a network that processes on average 66,000 transactions per second. Mm -hmm. The transaction has to be secure mm -hmm. for it to move because as you know, um, trade moved online, so did fraud, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So security is going to be very central mm -hmm. to the future of digital payments. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So a partner that's able to provide a secure uh, payment system, extremely important. Okay. You said something very interesting to me when we started this. Um, everyone sees, you know, that Visa logo, but yeah. they, what they know is their bank, yeah. right? <laughs> the reason that logo is there is to remind consumers that this is secure. You, have, you don't have to worry okay. yeah, as you make this payment. That's also a reminder to our partners and mm -hmm. also to a merchant. Yeah. If I walk into a merchant and you know, remove my card, it's an unspoken language, mm -hmm. right? They know that you know, they can trust that brand at this the bottom brand. there. Yeah. Yeah, so security is going to uh, continue to be a very critical part of digital payments. Okay. The third part is partnerships. Right, so um, I don't think there is one party that sits with the knowledge to build, you know, uh, what the future of payments is going to be. Whether we are talking about you know, payments in the metaverse, whether we are talking about um, uh, pays, you know, your Apple pays, global pays, it's going to be a collaborative effort, and um, different partners or different parties will play, will play a different role at every level. Whether it's fintechs who provide the last mile. Offering, whether it's banks who provide, um, you know, in addition to the, the, the infrastructure, liquidity to, to merchants who need to continue with trade, whether it's governments, you know, from policy formulation to delivery of, of, of citizen services, everyone has a role to play to build the future of payments. Okay. So, um, much as I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking to a specific product or a specific, you know, like this is what it's going to be, mm -hmm. these are the ingredients of what will we'll, we'll bring in the future of digital payments. Wow, excellent. Yeah. And I love that you mentioned quite an array of uh, areas in which you are quite key and focused on. But I'm keen on one particular one, and that is financial inclusion, because we are still saying we need to do more, we need to do better. And I'm sure you have a role to play there. I would like to know from your end, apart from um, the many other challenges that could be facing, uh, what is it that we can do to at least have everybody everywhere, as you have said, according to your purpose, get into the ecosystem? So, I mean, a few starts. Um, financial inclusion in Kenya sits at 83%. I think it's, we, we would sit back and pat That's ourselves in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But are we there yet? I don't think so. Yeah. Even at 83%, cash is still, you know, um, a way of 
transacting for us. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a perception that cash is free. Cash is not free. It, yeah, not. it introduces new risks. There's no traceability. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the benefits that would come out of you yeah. know, data that, you know, helps businesses grow, get seen, mm -hmm. it doesn't offer that. Yeah. So that's one aspect. So much as we have achieved from an access point of view, I think a lot more needs to be done to go deeper um, uh, because it's only when we deepen uh, the offering, whether it's the offering to consumers, whether it's the offering to merchants, whether it's the offering to government, for financial inclusion to be achieved. What I mean by that is access helps me you know, know that is you know, a, a financial service to be offered. Yeah. But is it the right financial service? Mm -hmm. We talk about, um, you know, women-owned businesses still being highly excluded from the financial services yeah. um, greed. And that's because there's digital inequity. Mm -hmm. When you look at financial access and some of the, um, you know, limitations or some of the things that we're still lagging behind yeah. is women in households don't have access to digital devices. Mm -hmm. And because of that, then they don't have access to, one, they don't have the digital literacy skills. Okay. Then ac absence of digital literacy means then they don't have access to digital financial services. Yeah. So those are some of the things that we need to address. Mm -hmm. The second aspect is, yes, access has been granted, but how many people understand? Mm -hmm. When I receive a message from my bank or from mobile money, am I able to interpret what that message says? Whether it's, you know, um, informing me a transaction has happened, whether it's um, informing me of my balance or a new product, am I able to interpret that? Okay. Financial literacy is the next thing that we need to do. Okay. Yes, so we've provided access. Mm -hmm. We need to provide the information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the third aspect is continued improvement on security. There's, we cannot overemphasize this mm -hmm. because uh, financial inclusion is, 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 is a narrative that we can advance, but only when there is adoption yeah. is it going to be successful. Mm -hmm. But for as long as either consumers or merchants feel that you know, digital payments are not secure because yeah. either I was calmed out of you know, uh, my mobile money, you know, wallet funds, or I was calmed out of, you know, my bank account, they need to know, you know, um, what measures have been put in to secure their funds. Okay. Yeah. So security is, is going to continue to be very, very important for us to advance financial inclusion. All right. And then lastly, it's, it's, it's policies. Do we have the right policies to, to you know, drive that, um, that, that framework? Mm -hmm. Are we incentivizing, you know, the providers of, 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 you know, services or products that, you know, advance the financial inclusion agenda? So that's the other thing that we need to bring in for that to be successful. Okay. Yeah. One other thing you talked about is partnerships, and I'm curious to know, because I've seen there's a quite a big uh, push partnering with startups. But I will get into that conversation after this break. So we take a